Hi, I'm Cindy Cloud with Riley Blake Designs, and today we're working on personalizing quilts and projects. As you can see, I have a beautiful personalized t-shirt quilt behind me, and it's easy to do. You just need the right letters and techniques, so I'm going to show you those today. So the first thing that I recommend you do is go to the Riley Blake Design website and there is an alphabet and numbers guide or template that you can download. We also have a free download for SVG files that you can use on your favorite cutting machine. But I'm gonna show you how to do the old fashioned trace, cutout, and applique method. I do also want to highlight that we have this uh, free download as well as a free pattern on our website. It's the personalized t-shirt quilt. You can make a quilt similar to this and there, the pattern with all the instructions of how to make that t-shirt quilt is in here. And we take you through how to take the banner I'm going to show you today and incorporate it into a quilt. It's a free pattern and we hope you enjoy make, using, make use of all your old t-shirts and make a fun t-shirt quilt. So I'm gonna put that aside for now and I'm gonna take you through how to personalize lettering. And I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to personalize your quilts. So that banner, um, for the pattern is about eight and a half inches and the pattern I think calls for 58 and a half. It does uh, recommend seaming in the middle, but um, if you've got length of fabric and you don't want to seam, you can run uh, your fabric the other direction so there's no seam in the middle. To get started, you need to grab some lightweight interfacing. I'm using this lightweight heat and bond one side is the paper that you're going to trace on and the other side you can fill the little bubbles that's the glue side that you're going to applique onto your fabric so i have already previously traced out all of these letters and i'm just going to trace out the r and i've chosen to do a capital r and the rest lowercase you can do it whatever combination you would like and there's good instructions to go along with this pattern. So there's our art right there. So I have this easy trace light box that is so handy to use, but you don't have to have a light box. You can trace out um, on a light surface or take it to a window to trace out, whichever is easy for you. And when I'm tracing out, um, again, there's all different ways to do this. I like to do all my letters together and applique it all at one time. So I'm just gonna trace my R and I just kind of line it up and make sure I have a little room in between my other letters. And just grab your mechanical pencil. Oh, add that too. I'm gonna get on my glasses so I can see better. And let's just trace. Now you can, these were free handed, but if you want a better line, you can certainly take your ruler. And then just trace all the straight parts, and then you can just freehand the curves. There we go. Oh, I forgot the inside of my R. It gets a little wobbly because there are um, those uh, glue bumps underneath. And so it's okay, because you're gonna cut it out straight if it's a little bit wobbly. So there's my letters, they're backwards. Now, um, whatever fabric is your base cloth, you just want your letters to be a nice contrasting color so you can see your letters. I'm gonna take, and I'm just like my example here, I'm just using white fabric. Now this is dyed, so there's no right side or wrong side, but if you had a print on your fabric, you want to um, glue this or press this to the back side of the fabric. So the ugly side of the fabric, the pretty side, 
as on the bottom. I'm going to put this to the back side and you're going to lay this down. Now it's important that this paper does not go beyond your, um, your fabric, otherwise it's going to adhere to your pressing station. So you want it the same size as your applique pieces or you want it a little bit smaller. So you're not ironing this um, lightweight interfacing uh, to your pressing board. So again, the glue is activated by heat. So you are going to press, we're not ironing, we're just pressing it for a couple seconds, a little longer than you think. so that glue is activated. And you can kind of tell when it's adhered to your fabric because you can see the edges pulling up if it's not. So just take a look and give it a little bit more time. Okay, that is ready to go. So now we're ready to cut out our pieces and I'm gonna move my light box out of the way. Now I do, you can do, you can cut them out with scissors or you can also use your rotary cutter. Since this is paper, it will dull your rotary cutter. So if you have a paper rotary cutter, um, I recommend using that, or you're just gonna have to change your blades sooner. So that makes it really easy. You can go and especially all these straight lines, I would just go one after another, but I've already cut out some of my pieces. But I'm just gonna show you how quick and easy it is to do the rotary with a rotary cutter. So I'm just going to cut this off like that. My, my long edges that are straight, I'm just going to use a rotary cutter. Just have to be really careful. Scissors work great too. Okay, I'm going to grab my scissors. And I'm just gonna snip around that corner. And so even if it's bumpy and it's not quite perfectly round, you can make it perfectly round right now too. Oh. For those uh, middle sections, just kinda make a little X, my scissors. These are not super sharp scissors, so. And um, I leave the paper on because it's easier to cut your fabric with the paper on. Again, it will tend to dull your scissors, so I don't use my best scissors cutting out my pieces. Okay, so there's our R. And when we applique it, it's gonna be the right turning the right way. So I previously already cut out all these other pieces. Um, when you're ready to start appliquing, you, the paper side, I just kind of make an X on the back like this a few places, and it makes it easier to pull off your paper. So it just pulls right off. Now we're ready to adhere it to our banner. So this isn't just for quilts. This is for any kind of special occasion that you want to make lettering, fabric lettering. That's a great way to personalize for holidays or for some special event. Okay, like I mentioned in the pattern for the t-shirt quilt, you need, you seam two uh, pieces of fabric together. And like I mentioned, if you don't want that seam that you need to cut it lengthwise, you'll just need a longer piece of fabric. 
But that shows us uh, the center of our banner. And now you can choose, do I want to center my lettering like the quilt behind me? Or you can shift it to the right or left, whatever you want to do. It's your quilt. You're in charge of that quilt. But for today, I am going to just center my lettering. And then I am going to grab my L. Now you can eyeball it. You're welcome to it. eyeball it, but I am going to just make sure top and bottom are even. So two inches on the top. Oh, it's a little, it's like two and a quarter on the top, two and a quarter on the bottom. So that's centered right on that seam. And I'm going to do just one letter at a time. And that is adhered. So that's ready to go. Now you can just add the rest of your letters. And you can decide how close you want your letters. You can lay them out. And the shiny side, just remember, goes towards the fabric. That has a dotted eye. And I'm going to grab my long ruler and just line it off the bottom of this banner right like that. Or actually, I'm going to line it up to the bottom of that first letter that I centered. And then I can just push my letters, make sure they're hitting out the same spot. And then I'm going to grab. Oh, this is what I wanted to grab. Now I'm going to space them. Oh, let's do, we can do them two inches. So that's two inches like that. Two inches. So I'm doing two inches from the side to the next side. And the Y is a little more tricky. I'm going to wait to do the Y. I said I did one at a time, but I, I lied. I'm going to do these three other letters all at the same time because I have them all laid out. Just give it a good press. That shiny side is down and we're activating the glue again. Just center that eye. Okay, so that's ready to go. Since those are done, we're lining that all up. It's looking good. Let's just do the Y. We want two inches. Oh, there's my ruler right there. Scoot that Y over. Okay. Last press. Okay, now all the letters are appliqued on. This is considered a raw edge applique. If your project or quilt are gonna be used or washed, you're gonna to want to also machine applique. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So um, again, these are on pretty good, but if it gets washed at all, they start peeling away after time. So I recommend, um, you can use matching thread, white, but um, you kind of see the white thread on both sides. So there's an invisible nylon thread that I think is great. You can hardly see the stitches, and I use that in a lot of my raw edge applique. I also use it in my bobbin thread as well. And I re recommend a uh, zigzag stitch, and some people do a beautiful blanket stitch with uh, matching thread or coordinating thread. Play around with your machine. See what kind of um, finished edge you want to use. But today I'm going to do a zigzag stitch with invisible thread that's nylon. And I have 
So I'm gonna put it on my zigzag stitch. Make sure you have an open toe foot. Otherwise, you're gonna break your needle. You have an open toe foot. I am going to tighten my zigzag so it's a little teeny zigzag. And just experiment with it. See what you like. I'm gonna start over here first. And you're just gonna get a bite of fabric on each side of your applique. So I'm going on my applique piece and then on the base cloth. It's just a teeny little stitch on each side. And when I pivot to go a different direction, I make sure it's on the applique piece. So I'm gonna pivot a different direction. Okay, I'm pivoting again. Just take your time, don't rush this. All right, let's take a look. So that's what it looks like after you've used that invisible thread. And that's how easy it is to personalize your project. Thank you.